Now, since it is Easter Sunday, or as it was called in the early days of Christianity, Resurrection Sunday, it's only fitting to talk about the resurrection. And so to start off, I'd like to talk about the evidence for the resurrection, and then a little bit later on, the nature of the resurrection. Now, in some ways, it's a little bit hard for us to understand the resurrection, because after all, we understand things and we learn from experience, even spiritual things. None of us have personally seen or touched or been involved in any way with a resurrected person. And yet we have great reason to believe that a resurrection occurs and that it will occur for all of us. But nevertheless, despite the lack of our detailed knowledge about it, the resurrection is something that is vitally important for us to know in very much the same way that we don't know all the details about what it will be like after this life. Because by definition, none of us listening today have ever experienced the next life, at least not in detail. So here we go. Why should we believe in the resurrection? I have to say that I am surprised and a bit dismayed when I hear from time to time people from different branches of Christianity, which I won't specifically name, uh, say that the resurrection was an allegory, that it only happened to Jesus, that it was a temporary phenomenon, which means that Jesus no longer has a resurrected body, that it was a spiritual and not a physical event, that it was some kind of a mystery which we may never really know. The reason I find all of those kinds of comments so distressing and so very, very sad is that the resurrection was the core of Christianity. It was the thing that brought Christianity to the fore. It was the thing that turned people from followers of Jesus into believing disciples. And it was the catalyst for the growth of Christianity beyond anything that the initial group of followers could have ever imagined. So let's talk about the arguments against the resurrection and the reasons why those arguments just really cannot be true. The first point to make is that Jesus was a real person. There are more writings, contemporaneous writings, that talk about Jesus than virtually any other ancient historical person. If you believe in Plato, you need to believe that Jesus was a real person. There are more than a hundred times more contemporaneous documents that attest to the existence of Jesus than we have about Plato or Aristotle or any of the other early great people who lived many, many millennia ago. Now, that's the first point. Jesus was a real historical person. And of course, believers believe that, but it cannot be doubted. There is too much evidence to the contrary. As to the resurrection, there are arguments that Jesus was a good person. And indeed, he was crucified because there is much evidence that that indeed occurred. But there are people that say his body was placed in a different tomb than was actually searched. And hence, when they didn't find a body, it was because he was somewhere else. Another comment that's often made, well, Jesus fainted from loss of blood. He was unconscious. And when he 
revived, he was seen again by many of his disciples who thought that he was resurrected. An honest mistake. Do any of those things really make sense? Well, I'll tell you why I believe the answer according to history is absolutely not. Absolutely not. Now, why do I even bring these up on a day like Easter? Because it's important to understand the arguments against something as well as the information for it. Here is the first reason why it would be absolutely impossible for it to have been the wrong tomb, Jesus just fainted, or somehow um, his body was moved, which is one of the other arguments. The first one is there is documented information that Jesus died on the cross and that as sundown came, witnesses attest that normally a leg is broken to bring on quick death, but Jesus had already expired. His side was pierced with a sword, just to be sure. If he had still been alive, being skewered in the side with a spear would have expired him. There's no question about that. Another reason that we know that he was indeed dead is that, and this is not often brought up, when someone is embalmed, according to Jewish tradition during that era, their body is wrapped in linen and then spices to preserve as much as possible the body are covered around it. No one could have lived with all of those. It's more like a cocoon. It would be like being inside of, um, it, would, it would be like being wrapped in cellophane. You would not survive long. This would have been an airtight seal or very nearly. No one could have breathed or lived after that. Jesus was indeed dead. And then we have the events that attest that the location where he died was absolutely known. Roman guards were placed there to guard the tomb. They were not assigned to the wrong place. When we come back, we will talk a little bit more about Jesus and how we know that he indeed died, that we know where he died, and that he indeed came back. I'm Martin Tanner. This is Religion Today. We return to Religion Today with Martin Tanner on KSL News Radio 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. Welcome back. I'm Martin Tanner, your host. It is a beautiful Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday. Before we talk more about Christ and his resurrection and the nature of the resurrection, let me invite anyone who's listening to attend this Friday, April 5th at 7 p.m., a debate that I've been challenged to by the Reverend Jason Wallace. The topic is, Are Mormons Christians? It will be held this Friday, April 5th, in the Behavioral Science Building on campus at the University of Utah, the Behavioral Science Auditorium, to be more specific. The time is 7 p.m., the Behavioral Science Building Auditorium is just north and east of the football stadium and just south and west of the Marriott Library. You can find it online. It will be a fun debate. I'm looking forward to it, and I hope you can attend. It's, of course, free of charge. Today is Easter Sunday, and when we took our break, we were talking about the evidence for the resurrection of Jesus and how the arguments against it just do not hold up. Jesus was a real person. He really died on the cross. He could not possibly have been mislaid in another location or just merely fainted because his side was pierced and he was bound in linen and then spices 
it, kind of a thick gel is the way it actually was made up that would have made it impossible to breathe then was covered over the entire linen that covered the body. Then there were Roman guards outside the tomb which had an enormous stone that was rolled in front of it. And when Roman guards did their duty, there was a seal, a great big seal of wax that was placed by the stone so that no one could move the stone. Then we have the evidence that the Roman guards saw something incredible. Roman guards, these were Roman soldiers, were part of the greatest army in the world at the time. They were fearless. They had been in many engagements. They were now stationed in a little hotbed of trouble, which was Israel. The Roman soldiers were fearless. They knew that the penalty for leaving their post was death. Nevertheless, they saw something which, according to the gospel records and those who knew, caused them to flee in panic and terror. What could that have been? The resurrection itself. We don't know exactly what they saw. There is, of course, no record of exactly what the resurrection looked like. But we know that the actual tomb was empty and that this cocoon of thick, waxy substance that would have covered Jesus' body still remained there, but Jesus was not inside. The enormous stone was moved. The Roman soldiers, fearless to every enemy, had fled in terror, and Jesus was gone. The cocoon that encased his body was empty. All of those things attest that Jesus really did come back to life. He was indeed resurrected. And then we have an often overlooked statement or passage in the New Testament which says that over 500 witnesses saw him after he was resurrected. Now those included many of the apostles, but many other Christians as well. And don't forget, he was seen by hostile witnesses who would never have wanted to have Jesus be resurrected. Now, who am I talking about, you might suppose? I'm talking about Paul. Before his conversion on the road to Tarsus, he was someone who persecuted the Christians, who despised Jesus, who despised Christianity, who was the accuser of Stephen and was responsible in fact, in large major, for Stephen's death. This is someone who would have done anything that he could to stamp out this horrendous thing, as he so believed it, Christianity. But he had a conversion. He saw the resurrected Jesus. That totally changed his mind frame. It was real. It was something that was not imaginary. No imaginary thing could have changed Paul as persecutor, or well, Saul as persecutor, to Paul the believer. Only something genuine and real. That is why, those are the reasons why the resurrection of Christ really happened. Those are the real evidences. Beyond that, one can find their own belief, their own knowledge, their own testimony by reading the scriptures and prayerfully asking yourself. In our last few minutes, what is the nature of the resurrection? 
we know that it is the reuniting of spirit and physical body. I have heard some interesting and actually fascinating questions about how could this possibly be over the years? Well, what happens if someone is devoured by a shark? What happens if someone is cremated and there is no longer a body? What happens if this, if that, if the other? The answer, obviously, that is not something that will completely make a resurrection impossible. How do we know that? We are told by many who have seen the resurrection in the future, and by that I'm talking about prophets of God, that indeed will take place. When will it happen? We don't know precisely when for the vast majority of people, but we know that it has already happened for some. For they were seen by Joseph Smith, Oliver Cowdery, and others. Now we can count off at least eight people that I know of who have indeed been resurrected. I won't take time to do that, but we know of at least eight occurrences where the resurrection has happened. So how does the resurrection take place? What really happens if the spirit goes back into the physical body? We know that somehow quite quickly at the time of the resurrection, the person becomes alive and that they are in physical appearance the same way they were at the time they passed away just prior to being eaten by the shark or <laughs> expiring or what, whatever the circumstance is, the person looks like that. And then according to statements of prophets, Brigham Young and others, if you were old, you will grow young until you are at the prime of life. And if you are very, very young, just an infant perhaps, you will grow until the prime of life. And at that point, you are in the prime of life, physically, spirit and body united forever. And that happens to all according to the scriptures. As in Adam all men die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. That is the beautiful story of the resurrection. Join me again next week. I'm Martin Tanner.